If you have your microwave on, it could actually impact your Wi-Fi speed. Did you know that having your Bluetooth on could also impact your Wi-Fi speed? Yeah, we've all seen these videos all over the internet and we're just not sure what really impacts your Wi-Fi speed and what doesn't. So today, I'm going to put a whole bunch of these things to the test to see what works and what doesn't. If you want faster connectivity, faster internet, faster Wi-Fi, then this video is for you. And welcome to another Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name's Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. Oh, and those dolls, they're not mine. I'm currently traveling. Okay, so in order to understand what really does and doesn't affect your Wi-Fi, let's check this out. So, normal router, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz band, LAN connection at the back, nothing special. This comes your standard. ISP type of router that you get from your service provider. I've covered them under the brand name just with a little tape there So well, that doesn't really make a difference. Okay, I can choose to connect to the 2.4 gigahertz or the 5 Let's start off with the 2.4 gigahertz standing by the router. I'm getting around 144 megabits per second Nice and steady Okay, let's move on Yeah, all right, let's get out of here and let's go for a little walk and let's see what we can get leaving the room where the router is at. And that's around, uh, guess what, 144 megabits. Okay, so that's holding pretty standard. Great. Let's go back into that room. Let's change it now to the 5 gigahertz. Remember, we're just trying to get a baseline to see what we're comparing against. And here it's 780, 866. Is it on hold steady? Yeah, looks that way. Okay, cool. Now let's do the far test and let's walk away from the router and see what we're going to get there. And there it drops down to like 526, somewhere around there. All right, that kind of makes sense. Let me show you, I'm going to have a little table here and I'm going to summarize all of this after each experiment that we run. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so close 1.44, far 1.44, close from the 5 gigahertz 866, go far 526. So that is our baseline test. Okay, let's get weird and let's start busting some of these myths or confirming some of these things. Let's start off with the pot. So essentially we're testing to see if you place the router inside things which are supposed to be blocking the signal, do they actually block the Wi-Fi signal? Yes, you heard correctly, this is the pot test. So essentially what we're gonna do is drag this chair over and I'm going to insulate the entire router in something that's supposed to be blocking its signal. Um, I'm gonna pop it up on some of these books because it's kind of a little bit hanging off the wall there. Let me grab this pot. Okay, so this is a pressure cooker. So I mean, this thing is quite solid, quite thick. Um, no, it's not dirty, it's just, uh, yeah, I may or may not have burned something in there. All right, let's stick it in there. Let's close it up with the lid. Perfect. All right, so that's pretty much insulated, right? We can agree on that. And then let's fire up the Wi-Fi analyzer. I'm connected on the 2.4 gigahertz and it's 104, 117 megabits per second. And it's holding pretty steady on the close test. Okay. Let's change it up now. And we're gonna change it to the five gigahertz to see what that does. Let me fast forward all this for you. Okay, 5 gigahertz, close test, 526 megabits per second. And again, remember, after all these tests, I will have a table outlining all this. Okay, let's go ahead and do the fire test. So we should take it out the room, change it back to the 2.4 gigahertz, and go for a little bit of a walk and see what that does. So now, let's have a look. Okay, look at that drop. Now let's drop down to 78 megabits per second. Okay, that's interesting. And if we change this now to the five gigahertz when you're out of the room, what is that at? 234. Okay, so we notice a change there. Let me show you a summary. So the pot test, the close 117 on the 2.4 gigahertz, far 78 megabits, close on the five gigahertz 650 megabits per second, on the far test on the five gigahertz 234. Okay, next weird thing that I saw is covering your router with tin foil. This is the tin foil test. Okay, back to the room we go. This time I'm going to cover the entire router with tin foil. 
and it's supposed to insulate the signal really affecting the range of the signal on this so on the close test we've got on a 2.4 gigahertz 52 megabits per second wow that's a massive massive drop being right in that same room okay got change it down to the 5 gigahertz 650 so that's holding steady so even with the tinfoil completely wrapped around it 5 gigahertz seems to be unaffected let's go to the far test on the 2.4 gigahertz 117 megabits per second so it's did better on a further range and then let's go back to the 5 gigahertz let's check that out and that is 234 megabits per second on 5 gigahertz okay so in summary again close 2.4 gigahertz 52 megabits per second on the far 2.4 gigahertz actually went up to 117 on the close test 5 gigahertz 650 megabits per second on the far 5 gigahertz at 234 megabits per second okay interesting all right what's next okay next up is the bluetooth test and the theory is that the more bluetooth devices that you have connected and set up around the router it's going to affect the signal so let's test that right we connected at 2.4 gigahertz to this router and there's two phones right next to it both have bluetooth on both connected to some headphones which are in the same room as well and 2.4 gigahertz 117 megabits per second all right let's switch it off to 5 gigahertz see what that does 866 so far not much of a difference let's do the far test just to keep these things on track um, right 5 gigahertz 866 and let's change it to the 2.4 gigahertz and here we go at 144 megabits per second so in summary so in the bluetooth test on the close and the far range they seem to hold exactly steady 117 megabits per second 117 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz and on the 5 gigahertz 866 and 866 so bluetooth doesn't seem to have any impact on the wi-fi signal next up is the microwave test which i've heard a million times how the radiation from the microwave affects the 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi signal let's test that right here's my microwave i got a glass in there with some water i can gonna test the signal beforehand let's see what that does and we're sitting at 117 megabits per second let's switch the microwave on and boil some water let that run and let's look at the thing 117 megabits per second zero zero impact let's go even weirder let's stick it in the actual fridge itself i don't know why maybe for installation purposes lots of objects around it okay what is it sitting at the moment 78 megabits per second and now we close the fridge uh, 78 megabits per second so pretty much it holds steady right so kids what did we learn today well look at the baseline test first of all interesting to note that at a close range 2.4 is 144 megabits per second cool and the 5 gigahertz is obviously much faster at 866 but when we move further away the 2.4 actually held steady at 144 and the 5 gigahertz took a massive drop to 526 still obviously much faster than the 2.4 but look at that massive decline so that was already interesting before we got started so when we look at the pot test, which essentially is an experiment in isolating the entire router, sticking into something that's going to block the signal. Did that actually work? Well, you can clearly see that it absolutely did. Both close test and far test on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz were directly impacted by the fact that those Wi-Fi signals couldn't get out. And the lesson for us is let your router be free give it as much clearance around it as possible let those signals roam so that you can get the best possible connectivity regardless where you happen to be and essentially the same happened with the tinfoil test when i isolated those signals inside that tinfoil well it had an impact direct impact on the close and the far range of the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz so the same lesson applies your wi-fi needs to be free of interference free of any metal and obviously don't wrap it up in tinfoil and then we have the famous bluetooth test so i don't know i didn't see any impact whatsoever literally not one megabits different when i had bluetooth on or bluetooth off or close and far i don't know bluetooth didn't seem to have absolutely any impact on the signal at all 
And then we went to the kitchen, stuck it in next to the microwave. Again, zero impact on the signal, whether it was microwave was on or off. There was no radiation leaking. I don't know what this was all about. I have no idea why this is still making its round on the internet saying that microwave still has an impact. Maybe you have a different experience with your microwave. I don't know. And then obviously for the final test, just stuck it inside the fridge just for fun because most of us don't actually keep our phones in the fridge. And you can see when you got big metal thick objects around it, again, it will impact the signal, but whether the door was open or closed had virtually no effect on it. Hit the thumbs up if you like this kind of video. If you're new here, welcome. Hit the head below to subscribe. Check out some of these other cool videos on faster internet, faster connectivity, and other tips and tricks. And I'll see you over there.